Welcome to Stock Talk, the new Stockhouse podcast series that brings you behind the scenes insights into trending topics from capital markets, influencers, and entrepreneurs broadcasting from the heart of the financial district in beautiful downtown Vancouver. Welcome to the Stock Talk podcast. This podcast is part of our Metals and Mining sector interview series, and our mission, as always, is to help listeners and investors understand more about investment opportunities in the public marketplace. I'm Dave Jackson. Founded in the summer of 2017, Quinell BC-based Green River Gold Corp is a publicly traded mineral exploration company that has a controlling interest in a wide variety of projects in this historic gold producing region. In addition to exploring its highly prospective hard rock gold property in the historic Barkerville area of BC, Green River rents Placer's claims to Placer gold miners for cash rent in lieu of a royalty. The company also sells mining supplies and equipment to Placer miners from its 6,000 square foot facility, also located in Quinell. The company is even a limited partner in a partnership that purchases raw Placer gold directly from miners. Green River Gold trades on the CSC under the ticker symbol CCR. When we last joined up with Green River Gold CEO Perry Little last December, the company was, like so many others, adjusting to doing business in a COVID-19 world, but at the same time, keeping busy with a series of new property acquisitions, partnerships, and M&As. We're glad to be joined once again by Mr. Little to catch up on all the new company developments that investors will be eager to hear about. Great to have you back, Barry. Nice to be back, Dave. Great to have you now. Perry, as I alluded to in the intro, it's been a busy last six months for CCR, and things look to be ramping up big time in the Caribou this summer. Can you give us an update on what's been happening with Green River Gold? I sure can. Uh, we have had a very busy stretch, uh, actually going back over a year now to about the time of the first podcast that we did. It was just about a year ago. Yeah. Uh, we have moved the ball forward on every aspect of our business over that time, and we have a lot of aspects. Uh, we're closing our $700,000 financing this week as well. It was originally set at $500,000, but we had a, a pleasant surprise recently with some sudden interest out of Europe and bingo, we were oversubscribed. Uh, a German newsletter writer has picked up on the story and is covering us for the German, Swiss, and Austrian markets. Uh, it is good to be noticed, uh, even if it's in Europe. It reminds me of the old Saturday Night Live routine with uh, David Hasselhoff. You know, we're huge in Germany. So. <laughs> well, that is great news, actually, Perry, and uh, congratulations on that. Now, you've just announced commencement of the UAV MAG Airborne Drone Geophysics Survey on its Fontaine Load Gold project. Uh, these kind of geo surveys don't come cheap. So what's the high end potential of what lies beneath the surface here? Well, I'll go back a little bit. Uh, as you know, we really took our time. We were very deliberate with the acquisition and staking of that property. Uh, in my days as a stockbroker, uh, I, I followed the Barkerville Gold story for over 15 years. And I'd also been following our other neighbor, uh, Amanika Mining with their wind dam project mm. for a long time. So I was quite familiar with the area before we started getting serious looking for property in 2017. Despite all that background, it wasn't until March 2019 we finally made the acquisition of the core part of the property and, and then we staked all the surrounding ground that we wanted. Uh, in total, we've got about 90 square kilometers of hard rock claims that are contiguous to the Barkerville Gold Mines property. Our timing uh, was a little lucky. Uh, one month after we closed on the acquisition, Osisco took over Barkerville Gold Mines and began to fast track the Barkerville property to production. That brought some serious capital to the neighborhood and things really heated up. Uh, Amanika then staked a bunch of additional property shortly after that. And both companies have been moving forward quickly with exploration and development. Uh, our property is bookended by Osisco on one end and Amanika on the other. Um, Osisco's project, just to give you an idea of the scale that's possible up there, mm -hmm. Osisco's project has an indicated resource of 3.2 million ounces of gold and an inferred resource of 2.72 million ounces of gold. So we're definitely in a good neighborhood and, and uh, fortunately we got in before the prices went up. Geologically speaking, and you know, people can go to our website or, or check out our new corporate update that'll be on there shortly uh, to get all the details. But uh, geologically speaking, the Fontaine property straddles an 18 kilometer length 
of the Quinell, Barkerville, and Slide Mountain terrains. Uh, between the early 1970s and early 1990s, sporadic work was carried out in the property, consisting of prospecting, sampling of bedrock and overlying uh, soil horizons. Uh, several showings with anomalous gold and silver values were identified as a result of that work. That was pretty primitive stuff. Uh, the project has not really seen some of the modern exploration techniques. Uh, we should get the results of the UAV mag geophysics survey within a few weeks, and it's fairly extensive. Uh, it's covering 67 square kilometers with 1,500 line kilometers with 50 meter spacing. Uh, the drones uh, that they use can fly at treetop level, so they get exceptional detail. Uh, we expect this will help us to identify high priority drill targets for an anticipated drill program. Uh, we are really excited to see the survey results in a few short weeks, and uh, uh, we'll also be announcing our 2021 surface and near surface exploration programs for the property shortly. So oh, we, we, oh. we expect big things from this property. In a recent Stockhouse article, you detailed how with renewed exploration, CCR is now at the epicenter of the original Caribou Gold Rush. How so? The Caribou Gold Rush doesn't get the publicity, and maybe the Yukon did or the California Gold Rush, but, mm. but it was a, a fairly big event in its day. Uh, the original Caribou Gold Rush started in 1860 and was centered around Barkerville, and that's only a few kilometers from our Fontaine project. Uh, at its peak in the 1860s and 1870s, Barkerville was one of the largest communities in Western North America. I've, I've heard it said that I think in the 1870s, it was the largest community in Western North America if you looked west of Chicago and north of San Francisco. Uh, <laughs> so basically, it was way larger than Vancouver <laughs> in the 1870s, wow. hard to believe. Uh, now, basically, it's just a little tourist uh, thing that's only open in the summer. Nobody actually lives in Barkerville. Um, there's a small town called Wells, 250 people right nearby, but, but uh, Barkerville is really just a, just a little tourist uh, attraction. Um, the, uh, the historic gold production in the Caribou since the, uh, that original gold rush has been about 3.8 million ounces. And roughly half of that comes from placer deposits and half from load deposits. Um, both placer and hard rock activity are picking up again. Our business model allows us to benefit from the increased levels of placer activity while, while searching for the big, the big score, which would be the load gold. Uh, there is a lot going on in the area again, for the first time in decades, really. Uh, Osisco's appearance on the scene late in 2019 has sparked interest in the caribou. Amanika's actively drilling on the other side of us as well. Uh, I believe it's the beginning of a new gold rush in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, much of the caribou has not really been, really been explored using modern exploration techniques. The old timers got the easy to reach placer gold, but they didn't have the technology to go deeper mm -hmm. or to explore as effectively for load gold. Uh, there's a lot to be discovered yet. Uh, the sources of the placer gold found on many of the numerous creeks and rivers in the caribou have yet to be located. Uh, the hunt is on. Now, Perry, the company looks set for strong growth in 2021. How are you placed to expand operations? Well, uh, this initial Fontaine exploration is just the start of what we plan to do with that property, but we've got several other irons on the fire as well. Uh, when we acquired the Fontaine project, we were aware of some interesting nickel showings on a portion of the property. Uh, recent developments uh, have highlighted that potential, and we uh, will have more to say about that over the next few weeks. In February, we announced the acquisition of our 1,200 hectare uh, Kaimar Silver project. That one's a little out of our neighborhood. It's near Invermere, BC. And uh, we just announced our initial exploration plans for Kaimar for this summer as well. Uh, it's got some interesting historical production numbers and we're excited to start work on that one. That'll be a real grassroots exploration uh, project for this summer on that one. Um, as you know, uh, we talk about expansion, we're, we're more than just an exploration company. We got started on a number of different gold related business ventures over the past couple of years, and they are all expanding this year. Okay, now that brings me back to what I'd mentioned earlier that the company really has developed a one of a kind business model in the metals and mining space. Perry, can you tell our investor audience some of the inherent benefits in it? Uh, sure, sure Dave. Uh, I followed and invested uh, in a lot of junior mining companies over a couple of decades as a stockbroker. Uh, one of the issues that most junior miners face is the constant need to raise financing to pay for exploration mm -hmm. and the dilution that comes with that. Uh, from the beginning, I, I looked to find businesses related to gold mining 
that could generate cash flow to offset some or hopefully all of that reliance on the capital markets, which we both know can be fickle at times. So far, we've started several businesses that service the hundreds of placer miners that are active in the caribou. We retail placer mining supplies, and we also sell larger placer mining equipment, uh, much of which is manufactured by a related private company right in a, a building that we share with them. The building is located in Quinell, right in the heart of the Caribou District, and it's an easy commute from most of our uh, mining properties. Uh, we are also a limited partner in a partnership that purchases raw placer gold from the local miners and sells it to refiners and other end users. Uh, we also provide consulting and permitting services to the local placer mining community. All of those businesses are expanding. Uh, we really just got started on those last year and got our feet wet. And th there's a demand uh, that is far exceeding what we expected, frankly. I was the optimist and i beating the expectations that I had. Those businesses allow us to maintain a talented local workforce and they give us year round access to our caribou properties from really from just down the road from our properties. Uh, our exploration costs are reduced by having local geological expertise and a local labor force. Ultimately, the idea is to generate enough cash flow from our other businesses to fund much of our exploration costs internally and get away from having to worry about where the share price is when we're going to do a financing. Perry, part of your business model is really unique in the mining space. Acquire and develop placer mining claims and then leasing them out. Can you explain this in detail to our audience? Yeah, this is, uh, this is one I stumbled on. I was trying to figure out how to apply a royalty model to placer gold, where uh, uh, it's difficult because placer gold, uh, anybody who's ever been on a, a placer mine will realize that when the sluice box is, uh, when you're finished running for the day, and the, the, the gold's sitting right there and nuggets tend to disappear and uh, uh, gold just kind of goes out the back door. So it, you're really difficult to collect a royalty on placer uh, because you're never going to get, I don't want to say never, but you're rarely going to get an honest reporting on how much gold is actually coming out of the ground. Right. So we, we came up with a modified model. So in simple terms, we are a placer mining company that will never do any placer mining. Think of it as a modified royalty model uh, applied to placer gold mining. So most placer mines are small. They're mom and pop operations and they're chronically underfunded. Uh, we have 24 square kilometers of placer mining claims along some of the best creeks in the Caribou. And we have a number of claims that are permitted and ready to mine. So when people come to town, the first question they ask is, where's a good claim? And before you even answer that, they say, is it permitted? So most claims that are out there aren't permitted. We go through the process of getting them permitted and our, our mine manager is a permit specialist. We actually rent them out to do permits for other people. Um, so we've got a bunch of them that are permitted and ready to go. And that gives us a leg up when people come to town and they wanna to try gold mining. We've got, a, we've got a menu of options for them, different sizes, shapes, and, and styles of gold mining properties. The, uh, we, we learned basically from our own experience, plaster mining, how tough it is to get going. We, we were running a plaster mining operation through a private company for a few years. And we, we came up with a model that works to allow plaster miners to get mining with less startup cost. It also gives Green River access to safe cash flows. So what we do is we rent out the plaster claims that we permitted for a monthly cash rent based on expected gold recoveries. And the placer miners take the exploration risk and develop the claims. We put up the reclamation bond. Uh, the miner saves the upfront cost of purchasing a claim and putting up the bond. Uh, we maintain ownership and we get the benefit of the development work done by the renters and any exploration success that they have. So it's, it's similar in many ways. I, I've likened it to land development except that in our case, we acquire the land and permit it. Somebody else pays us to do the development for us. Mm -hmm. The amount of rent we receive is by far the lesser part of the benefit that we've received. Uh, the increase in the value of the mining property as it gets turned into an operating mine from a piece of raw forest is the main benefit. Uh, if the miner is successful in discovering economic quantities of glass or gold, the value of the claim goes up even more. We tend to own blocks of claims in the same vicinity, so any mining success on one claim will push up the value of the proximate claims as well. Mm. Uh, no, one other benefit is any money spent by the miner exploring or producing our claims also extends the ac expiration date on the claims without us having to spend any money on assessment work. Uh, it, so it works for the renter and it works for us. 
and uh, they get to keep the gold minus the little bit they paid to us in rent. And uh, what we do, we, we just estimate how much gold they're going to get. And we mm -hmm. agree on a rent, just like any landlord and tenant would. And we, we receive that rent in cash. We don't want 10% of their gold because we're not going to be there to spot check to see how much gold they're actually going to get. Um, we keep a very clo uh, close watch on them because they're working on our reclamation bond. So we make sure they're operating clean and within the rules. We've got a fairly extensive contract they sign. Uh, and they have the right to come back for a second year if they wish. Uh, if they really like the property, in all likelihood, they're probably going to want to buy it. And, uh, you know, they've done the work to explore it and increase the value of it. And then they have to make an offer. So it, it, it works quite well for us. And again, it's a business model we stumbled on actually through an accident with our private company. We, uh, we bought a property that wasn't very good for 25,000, turned it into what looked like a mine. And uh, it wasn't a very successful mine, but we had somebody come along and offer us $100,000 for it. I thought about it afterwards and I wondered why they would offer us that much money for a mine that we weren't getting much gold out of. And it hit me that when we bought it, it was a little goat path down to a tiny little retention pond. By the time they came and saw it, uh, we had knocked down a bunch of trees, which we were allowed to do. We'd expanded the footprint. We had larger equipment on it. It looked like a mine. And uh, we, as a result, we were able to sell something for 100000 that we bought for 25000 The only difference was we put the money into developing it. Now we have somebody else put the money into developing it. So it, I think it's a good business model. It'll make us a few dollars. And the whole idea here is to defray the cost of exploration on our hard rock properties. So over time, I think this could be quite a good business. We're, we're, we're only renting a few claims at this point, but it's it's building. Okay, now, Perry, it would be remiss of me not to mention that your stock has been on a bit of a roller coaster ride over the last 12 months. What can you tell our investor audience regarding the current valuation of your stock and you know why you think it's a good buy right now? Boy, I think it's a good buy right now. Um, we have a little over 54 million shares outstanding. Uh, which gives us a, a market cap of less than $4 million. Uh, for that price, investors are getting our highly prospective 90 square kilometer Fontaine load gold project, uh, which is right next to a gold mine that's expected to be in production in 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, they also get 24 square kilometers of placer gold claims, a retail business, a stake in a gold trading enterprise, our Quinell nickel project, and our Kaimar silver project. Uh, on top of that, we've got a 6,000 square foot uh, combined office, retail and manufacturing building that serves as home base for all of our businesses. We've got local employees and consultants who live within an easy daily commute of all our caribou properties. And all of that you're getting for less than $4 million. And we're just getting started. We have a lot of other ideas in the works. Um, new ones come up just about every week. So we've got a million ways of enhancing. Yeah, maybe not a million. We've got a lot of ways of enhancing that cash flow as we go. So that's that's about it. But I think we're a heck of a bargain at uh, less than $4 million. No, well, it sounds like value to me for sure, Perry. Now, we have been speaking with Perry Little. He is the CEO of Green River Gold. I'd like once again to thank Perry for joining us and to help share us with some helpful and insightful information about his company with our Stockhouse podcast listeners and investors. And as always, investors are reminded to do their own due diligence before making any investment decision. I'm Dave Jackson for Stockhouse Media and the Stock Talk Metals and Mining Sector Podcast. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder to follow us on social media at Stockhouse for the latest updates on all your favorite public companies in North America. For more in-depth coverage, industry news, and to connect with our active investor community, you can visit our website at stockhouse.com. Also, don't forget to visit our new and improved Stockhouse Deal Room on site for unique and exclusive private placement opportunities only available on stockhouse.com. <laughs>